So now before we head onward to the uh, forest temple, there's actually one more thing we can get uh, that's really useful. Um, however, we need 100 rupees, and I'm not quite there yet, so I'm going to head all the way back to Link's house. There's actually a treasure chest that I did not get yet, and it's in Link's basement. So you want to enter this house, go off to the right side, and there is a ladder that leads down into this, um, this dark area down here. Because it's so dark, I didn't grab this treasure chest before, uh, but now that we have the lantern, we can easily see down here. It's pretty obvious where it is, but, you know... Anyways, so you want to open the chest to get a purple rupee, which is worth 50, so that should well over put you at 100 rupees. Um, if you don't have quite that much, you can always just slash bushes or defeat enemies, or roll into trees and such, or throw pumpkins in order on village and such, although well, that way is probably pretty slow. You can do all those things to get rupees, and once you get to 100, you want to head back all the way back to Koro, and he actually has a special deal for us. Uh, so once again, I'm just going to be fast-forwarding through all this because it's just a lot of walking. We're going to head all the way back to Farron Spring. Once you get there, you then played with the, uh, the Ordon Shield yet, but now that we have, we've gotten those and we are able to use those in our human form. So, and how it works is very really simple. Once you head over here to this Deku Baba, then Minda will have you know, her little button on the bottom of the screen will light up, so you can press it and she will say, oh, there's those weapons that I worked so hard for, <laughs> as if you didn't do any of it. She mentions that you can use, you know, the sword just works just like the wooden sword, you just smack them, this time it does a little more damage because it's uh, a metal one, the board on the sword, and, uh, but the shield works very simply. Uh, you past all the games you'd have to Z target and then you'd have to have a separate button to use your shield, so you'd have to attack, but you couldn't attack and use your shield at the same time, so you had to, like, press one button, then you have to switch to using the other button, you have to switch back to using the other button. This time around, you are constantly defending while you're using your Z-targeting. Um, and you only stop defending when you are attacking. So it's actually a lot simpler this time around, and it takes it's all condensed into one button as opposed to having two buttons for that. Uh, so it's actually really nice uh, having it that way. It allows you to have more, more options as far as your controls because you have more buttons to do more things. Uh, you want to head on and talk to Koro, and he says uh, that he locked the gate to uh, the Farron Woods and the Farron Cave, um, because there was monsters that were coming out of there. Um, however, he sees that you want to go on. He didn't really recognize you at first because of your green tunic. Um, however, after a moment, he recognized you as the Organian. He goes on and he gives you the small key that'll allow you to open the gate. He says you will definitely need some lantern oil to get through the Farron Woods again. Uh, so he says that he actually has a special deal right now. He's willing to sell you a bottle full of lantern oil for 100 rupees. And this is an awesome deal. Um, I mean, the lantern oil isn't really... It's kind of expensive for lantern oil, but the bottle is the real treat here. Uh, there's only four bottles found in the game, and they're all very useful. Um, so this is one of the bottles. And you don't actually use uh, the bottle yet. You can fill up your lantern if you like with lantern oil. However, I recommend that you wait on that, and you'll see why in just a little bit. Uh, so just leave your lantern alone. You want to head over here and you want to open the gate and enter the cave. Now the cave, this time around, we are not in wolf form, so we can't take that shortcut where we dug through that little hole here near the entrance to get to the other side. Uh, however, we'll, we'll be able, to, we'll have to go through. Uh, however, if you have been through your, we've been here through here before, so the lanterns or the lamps should all be lit, um, so that should provide some light for you along your way. Uh, this little chunk right here is kind of dark, but. Most of it will have lanterns along the way. Watch out for the really rats. There's actually a couple more enemies this time around, uh, but they shouldn't pose you any problem for you. Now, that, especially now that you have a shield, you can defend against them. Continue working your way through. Once again, here's some more rupees and such if you uh, are in need of some. And then here you'll come at the end of the cave. So I'm actually going to turn off my lantern here. So now we will be back in the part of Farron Woods over here, and now there's this purple fog around here, I mean just like we saw in when we were in the wolf form, uh, and you can you can actually get rid of it by using your lantern, so what you, what you want to do is when you're standing close to the fog, then you can use your lantern and it will make it disappear. Uh, so once you're using your lantern you're standing somewhat close to it, then it'll start this little cinema in which the monkey comes by and actually steals your lantern and puts it on the end of a stick. So now uh, Minda will then yell at you to tell you that you're an idiot. Uh, for not paying attention and having your lantern stolen, so... <laughs> Always getting bashed on by her. She will then disappear, and you will just want to follow the monkey who is signaling for you to come. And she will then jump into the into the fog, and you'll see that she keeps waving it around to make the fog disappear. So, you just want to follow behind her, and this is just basically an escort quest. You just are following her to uh, get all the way through the woods. You want to stay pretty close to her, just do not touch the fog. If you touch the fog, then you will fall asleep and you will have to start the area all over again. So, uh, and unfortunately this monkey is 
kind of stupid. She, I don't know, she just takes like the worst possible path through this entire area. It's just like the longest route you could possibly take, in my opinion. She kind of zigzags back and forth and goes through all these awkward areas. Because we're just trying to go off to that little area on the bottom, bottom right there on the map. Uh, and yes, she goes like all the way, all the way around this entire area. So anyways, uh, you just want to keep following her, you want to kill the enemies along the way, there are keys and uh, Deku Babas along the way, if any of the enemies come close to her, she will uh, tremble in fear and just stay in one spot. You have to stand close to her and there has to be no enemies in order for her to move forward, so if any enemies attack, uh, like right up here, I think there's another keys, um, if it gets too close to her, then she will uh, stop doing anything, and she'll have, you'll have to defeat it before she'll continue on. So once you get near the end here, then uh, she'll s swoop the uh, lantern back and forth again to, to make sure all the purple fog is gone. And here you actually want to stand next to her. I just assumed she would keep walking, but apparently you need to stand next to her. Um, so in any case, just lead her back up to the upper ledge. She'll actually swoop it one more time, just to make sure that you got up here and everything. But make sure you stay next to her, and then she will continue on. That's the final one, and she will then motion for you to follow, and she'll drop the lantern for you. So and she will then disappear into the North Farron Woods. So now you want to pick up your lantern again, and it's kind of awkward because it's little, so you have to stand over it at just the right spot. Once you pick up the lantern, you'll see that it is out of oil, and kind of predictable, I guess, but it doesn't matter if it was really low on lantern oil, if it had a lot in it, it will still be empty when she drops it, so uh, that's, why, that's why I told you not to use the lantern oil that you got from Koro, uh, because uh, you'll be able to fill up your lantern now. Now anyways, when I enter the North Baron Woods, you'll see that there's actually a bridge um, in this area uh, that I mentioned it earlier, but in case you didn't see that or whatnot, you just make sure you log that away in your memory for now that there's a bridge here. Odd. You want to kill the Bokoblins that are in this area. There is Trill off to the right here, and you can buy more lantern oil and such from him if you desire to do so. Um, I don't need any more because my, both my bottles are full. You want to head forward, you'll see that there is a, a Golden Wolf. Uh, that is up ahead, and uh, it'll start growling at Link, and he will act like he's going to defend himself, and the wolf will then jump at Link and like bite him or something. <laughs> so it'll take you to this like misty, foggy world. Um, it also looks kind of like it's snowing too. As you'll see that the wolf is behind Link, and it will like transform into this like undead soldier thing. And it's not two different people; it just he has like two different uh, forms for himself, just like you do. You run forward and smack him and he will like counterattack you. You don't really stand a chance against him. So he goes on to say that you're kind of pathetic at the moment and that uh, you know, if you want to become the hero of legend you're going to have to um, get the courage and strength in order to um, you know, have the right to wear the tunic that you do. So he goes on to say that you know, his, this guy's name is the Hero Shade it's, uh, and he is kind of like a, he explains that he's like a hero of the past who has you know, come to teach you some of the secrets that he has. Uh, and it's never really specifically said which hero, like from which game that he's from. However, there are so many connections to Ocarina of Time within this game that it is presumed uh, by most people that he is, uh, in fact, the spirit of Link from that game, from Ocarina of Time. He goes on to say that uh, a lot of enemies they have a lot of a lot of health, and you'll you'll smack them a whole bunch, and they'll fall on the ground for a moment to be stunned, uh, but then they'll get right back up, and they'll have even more health. So. Um, in order to defeat them quickly, what you can do is you can smack them once they do get knocked to the ground. You can then Z-target them and press A, and Link will perform this ending blow, which he stabs them. And it will take all that health down at once. So rather than taking like 8 hits or something like that, an enemy will take 4 and then 1. And you can defeat them quickly. So this is a very useful technique. You should use it often, if you, especially when you have a whole bunch of enemies. Sometimes you can use it. Just be careful if you are surrounded by enemies and such. Uh, you might not want to use it immediately. Um, this technique might look kind of familiar. It's uh, from several of the other Zelda games as well. Uh, namely, the ones that come to mind immediately are Adventure of Link. Uh, you have a downward thrust in that game. Uh, but also in the Minish Cap, you can use the Rock's Cape in order to jump, and then you can stab the ground. You've also probably seen it in the Smash Bros. series from S Smash Bros., Smash Bros. Melee, and Smash Bros. Brawl. Those are the games that come to mind for me at the moment. There's probably others uh, in which Link can do this. Uh, or something very similar in any case. Use the ending blow often to defeat enemies quickly that have a lot of health. So he will then transport you back into Farron Woods. 
So with that, we will appear back here, and now all we have left to do is to enter the Forest Temple. So if you want to head up here, there will be two Buckle Blends. This is actually a good chance for you to, to test out the Ending Blow. Uh, actually, if you use a jump attack in particular, it will knock them back on the floor there, and you can use the ending blow to defeat them quickly. Uh, once again, if somebody's smacking you, there's a good chance where you can uh, use Z-target them real quick, and you can jump out of the way by you know, side jumping with A. Now we are just going to enter the Forest Temple. That basically concludes this chapter. So thank you for joining me, and if you would uh, like to see me for the next chapter, I will take us through the Forest Temple.